Hey guys, finally made it to Foodie Friday, and today we're making a cream of broccoli soup with some very <clears throat> uh, inflammation-fighting ingredients like ginger and turmeric. So I started some preparation, and uh, I've chopped up some onions and carrots and celery to make classic mirepoix. This base, when you uh, prepare it in an oil or um, a butter base, is really the base for a lot of uh, soups. And um, also if you um, like to make a richer tomato sauce, maybe you're making, adding meat and making a boulonnaise, it's a really uh, good way to start off your tomato sauce. So let's get to cooking. So I've chopped up a half of onion and some, there's about two carrots and a few sticks of celery. And I've included, you know, that, that little, floury, flat, leafy part of the celery. Um, I like the flavor and I tend to use it in my soups and, um, you know, all kinds of cooking stews. Um, it adds a really nice flavor. So, you know, don't throw it out. And I also, um, instead of butter, I'm using ghee. I'm using about two tablespoons of ghee. And um, ghee is basically, you probably know it as clarified butter. And it is used, you know, like with a lobster. Um, but basically what they've done is they removed it, the proteins from the butter, the butter. And so um, it can have a higher smoke point and allow you to cook on a higher heat. And um, it has a very similar flavor to butter. So I'm just going to add this. Um, I've melted the ghee in a large pot. And I'm just going to start adding um, the onion, starch, and celery to make a meal broth. And... The whole point of a mirepoix is to have it cook down and become very soft. So it is not something that you want to really cook the vegetables that they brown. You want to cook the vegetables so they're softened. And that can take anywhere from 20 minutes to half an hour. So I'm just going to add this stuff, give it a little bit of a stir. Um, watch the temperature on it again. You don't want it to get away from you. Um, but look at how bright those colors are. That's really nice. And just like I said, let it cook down and get your meal claw ready. So I've added um, some salt and black pepper. And now I'm going to add the ginger and the turmeric. And you can see how nice and orange that turmeric is. Um, you know, generally when you see bright colors in nature, um, there's some good stuff in there. So I'm going to um, let that cook a little bit because you can see here's, you know, an onion. It's not quite translucent yet. Um, you want it to be translucent. Um, but I want to get some of those spices in there and let them cook and let that fragrance uh, start to you know, become part of the ingredients. So I um, wanted to tell you a little bit about why I use black pepper with my turmeric. And if you um, take turmeric over the counter, you know, you buy capsules, please make sure it has black pepper in it or um, look, for, look for something called piperine, um, which is the active ingredient in black pepper. This really inhibits um, the liver enzymes that break down the turmeric, and you will not get as much benefit by adding the, the piperine and the black pepper. You really boost turmeric absorption significantly. So make sure you use black pepper if you take capsules. Find the capsules that contain the black pepper. So a little bit about turmeric too, um, and how it reduces inflammation. I found an article um, that it works by decreasing something called nuclear factor kappa B. And basically it goes, you know, it's something that enters into the cell. It works on this genetic level, on the cellular level. And this is something that goes back to your fight or flight mechanism. Um, and if you have your fight or flight mechanism going on all the time, you have a lot of cortisol release. And all that cortisol, um, as you know, um, 
it's not good for your brain. It's not good for your energy levels. It's certainly uh, really bad for your body. Um, so adding turmeric can um, decrease that. Um, you know, all that constant cortisol and fight or flight thing going on all the time. Now, um, ginger, ginger works a lot like uh, COX-2 inhibitors, things that you can buy with a prescription like Celebrex or Mobic. Um, they work also like sort of like NSAIDs, a little higher up in the cascade. And basically they reduce prostaglandins. Prostaglandins, um, when you decrease prostaglandins, um, you decrease pain. Um, so it's kind of like taking Celebrex or Mobig or an NSAID like Motrin. There's also, uh, I found an article that said it may decrease tumor necrosis factor one alpha, which is basically, um, you know, something that's out of hand in autoimmune diseases like, um, and it works a lot like things like Remicade, Embrel, Humira, um, so decreasing t tumor necrosis factor can also help with autoimmune diseases. Um, so those are some of the studies I read and I thought that I'd share that with you. And I think now um, I've gotten to the level where I'm going to start adding all the vegetables. Uh, so I've chopped up, um, it looks like about three heads of broccoli with the stem. And you know, sometimes I cut the stems up, they look really pretty. Um, like in a stir fry, so don't throw them away, use them. I'm using some in, in this recipe. Also, I, um, I buy the stems because I like the broccoli leaves to be present. They also have a lot of nutrients in them, so uh, look for the broccoli leaves. And so we're gonna add this to the pot. So we've got about three heads of broccoli and one large zucchini. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add some of my homemade chicken stock. This is about, I wanna say two cups of chicken stock. Um, I usually make this myself. And so um, you can see it's pretty clear. I make it with chicken some leftover chicken or sometimes some fresh chicken. And I add a um, pot of water to that. I add peppers, I add bay leaves, I add carrots and celery, and I just let that cook down. And it makes a really nice broth. So I'm gonna add that to my soup. This is the base of the soup. And you're gonna let this cook um, in about half an hour, 20 minutes to half an hour. So uh, cover the pot and when you're done, don't worry about all these big chunks because I have my handy hand blender. And if you're looking for a gift for somebody who likes to cook, get them one of these, they'll love it. So I'm gonna cover this and we'll be back in about half an hour. Okay guys, we're almost there. At this point, I'm going to add about Half of this bottle, it's a full fat coconut milk, it's a, in a carton, so maybe about four ounces of that. And you want the fat, make sure you give it a good shake. I'm gonna let that continue to cook in the coconut milk. Probably got another five or 10 minutes left. Okay, so I think we're ready now. Come and see how all the vegetables have broken down. I've turned off the heat. And at this point, I'm going to add the half avocado. Avocados have some great fats in them. Remember, your, all your cells are made of phospholipids. Lipids are fats. You need it for your brain. You need it for all your cells. And I'm going to start uh, mixing with the hand blender. And helps to plug it in. Okay, guys. Break this down. So it becomes a smooth soup. And it up. So it up in a few minutes. All right, guys, we have the final product served up here. I've made a salad with some green tomatoes and uh, some of that leftover half of avocado and some craisins. And I've also made a nice olive oil and lemon dressing that I am going to put on that. I think that's really something that adds a nice freshness to a salad is to make your own dressing. Oh, and it also has a little garlic in it. 
So I tasted this soup. I think it tastes really great. But one of the final things that you might want to add is some pepper flakes or a, a sriracha sauce. And um, some people don't like it spicy, so I'm just going to add that to mine and just put a little swirl on it, make it look pretty. And I'm going to finish it off with some pumpkin seeds to add some texture and flavor. And then Rebecca says, well, but Becky doesn't like all that hot stuff. So she's just going to get some pumpkin seeds. And I'm drinking a tea that I made with some of that fresh ginger and lemon. And that's the final product. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. You'll try it. Um, this is Jackie Bardini signing off. Bon appetit. All right, guys, we have the final product served up here. I've made a salad with some green tomatoes and uh, some of that leftover half of avocado and some craisins. And I've also made a nice olive oil and lemon dressing that I am going to put on that. I think that's really something that adds a nice freshness to a salad is to make your own dressing. Oh, and it also has a little garlic in it. So I tasted this soup. I think it tastes really great, but one of the final things that you might want to add is some pepper flakes or a, a sriracha sauce. And um, some people don't like it spicy, so I'm just going to add that to mine and just put a little swirl on it, make it look pretty. And I'm going to finish it off with some pumpkin seeds to add some texture and flavor. And, and Rebecca says, well, but Becky doesn't like all that hot stuff, so she's just going to get some pumpkin seeds. And I'm drinking a tea that I made with some of that fresh ginger and lemon. And that's the final product. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. You'll try it. Um, this is Jackie Bardini signing off. Bon appetit.